Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're taking a look back at the Microsoft Surface 3, now that it's running Windows 10. We'll do a quick refresh of what the Surface is, and take a look at some of the changes that Windows 10 brings along. Next. Okay, so this year's version of Microsoft's tablet laptop hybrid comes with a 10.8 inch 1920x1280 display. Now it's not as pixel packed as the Pro 3's 1440p panel, but it's still stunning in its own right. Its magnesium liquid metal construction is as nice to look at as it is to hold, and the clean hard lines of its design look as futuristic as ever. Now as far as weight, Microsoft definitely trimmed some fat off this guy. It now comes in at just under 1.4 pounds making it slightly heavier than its one pound iPad Air competitor, but considerably lighter than rival Ultrabooks, even with the type cover added. Directly to the right and left of that gorgeous display are a pair of front facing speakers that are nicely tucked away along the edge of the bezel. They're barely noticeable, but still manage to pump out decent audio. Along the top, you'll find a 3.5 megapixel front facing camera, and around back you'll find the eight megapixel shooter. Now along the right side of the device is where you'll be making all your connections. Here we've got a mini display port connection, a full size USB 3 port, and a micro USB charging port, along with a 3.5mm headphone jack. On the bottom we have a connection for the optional type cover, and hidden away into the multi angle kickstand is an SD card slot for added storage if the Surface 3 64 or 128GB options aren't enough. Now that optional type cover it's really more of a necessity, as the hardware keyboard is vital in making this the hybrid device that we expect it to be. It's beyond me why it's not part of the package and bundled in at the starting $499 price point. But we all know that's not the case and you'll have to shell out an additional $130 bucks for the experience, which incidentally isn't complete without the pen as well. Tack on another $50. The cover itself offers a surprisingly decent typing experience. The backlit keys have a nice tactile response when pressed and the amount of travel is actually not as bad as I expected. I do prefer to keep the cover flat as opposed to the angled position, you get a little too much bounce in the keyboard when it's propped up like that. And the trackpad, although small, is quite responsive and does feature left and right click functionality. Even the material they are using on the back of the cover is improved and now offers a nicer feel in hand and a more premium look, all while holding up better to everyday wear and tear. Now the other half of these quote unquote optional accessories is the surface pen. Though not as indispensable as the type cover, it's still a very useful tool and you're missing out on too much without it. It offers precise input control and opens the door to some of the surface's best features. It's powered by a single quadruple A battery and has an all aluminum build that comes in four different color options. Now we've got two buttons that sit beneath your index finger for toggling your eraser and right click functions as well as a clickable top button that when paired to your Surface via Bluetooth will launch OneNote. You're able to tweak your pen sensitivity and in-app functionality to some degree using the Microsoft Surface app that comes pre-installed. The buttons themselves are not customizable out of the gate, but thankfully there's third-party software out there that will allow you to reprogram them to better suit your needs. The pen is great for content creators, note-takers, and pretty much anyone else because at the very least it helps with navigating some of the smaller touch points of the OS. So now that we've taken a close look at the Surface 3's hardware, it's time to take a peek at the revamped OS. With the Surface tablet, most of the issues circled around Windows 8, and now that Microsoft has released Windows 10, it's time to see if things have indeed improved as promised. We'll start with the most obvious feature, the return of the Start menu. Microsoft has taken the best of the modern UI and shrunken it down to complement the classic list view of programs and folders that is the Windows Start menu. You're able to adjust the size of the menu and customize the content of the live tiles to your liking, as well as the color and size, adding frequently used apps, folders, and settings as well. If you happen to be a fan of the modern UI from Windows 8, an updated vertical scrolling version is there for you in tablet mode. Continuum is a feature that tries to give you the best experience at any given time and will recognize when you're using your Surface as a tablet without the type cover and initiate the tablet mode, if so desired. Tablet mode will not only give you a more touch-friendly UI, but will also make previously windowed apps or web pages permanently full screen until the mode is disabled. Up next, and just a swipe away at any time, is Action Center. 
Here you have access to all your notifications as well as a bevy of quick settings. It seems Microsoft has taken some of Mobile Tech's best features and fit them into Windows 10, and the result is a refreshing take on the way things look and operate on the desktop environment. Again, things are quite customizable as far as what pops up in the notification area, as well as what quick settings are available. Swipe in from the other side of the display, and you get your virtual desktop option. This is another awesome addition that has finally made its way to Windows. The ability to simultaneously have multiple desktops running almost completely independent of one another, and the ability to effortlessly toggle between them as needed, is a long overdue feature that Mac users have enjoyed for years. Now you're able to streamline your workflow and keep your desktop free of cluttered windows and such. Alright guys, we're coming to the end here, but there's one more really cool feature of Windows 10 that I want to touch on, and that's Cortana. Microsoft's Virtual Assistant is another feature that's made its way to the desktop from the mobile side of things. She's always just a tap away on the taskbar, and can be used to make calls, send texts, create calendar events, take notes, and control specific app commands, as well as search the web. She's actually very good at her job, and she's impressed me with her voice recognition and contextual awareness. She's been a great addition to the Surface and Windows 10 simply because she makes some of the more mundane or tedious tasks a bit more fun. So is the Surface 3 perfect? No, not by any means. I've noticed some sluggishness here and there, and some of the key features that are present on other operating systems are still missing here. But the more I use the Surface, the more I enjoyed it. There's always room for improvement, but Microsoft has addressed many of the issues that have plagued Windows in recent years. The Surface tablet has evolved since its inception, and is now leaner, lighter, and sleeker than ever. And thanks to the newly released Windows 10, the Surface may finally, truly be the device Microsoft has always seen it as. Gone are the days of Windows 8 and its confusing and conflicting user experience, and gone are the days of the limited Windows ARM-based variant that was RT. You're now able to run virtually any application that the processor can handle. Sure, it lacks the horsepower and other high-end specs that the Pro version has, making it notably the lesser of the two. But now thanks to the updated OS and a few other changes, it's for the first time just as versatile as his bigger brother. With the Surface 4 just around the corner, and this guy most likely getting a considerable discount soon, maybe it's time for a lot of us to take another look. Well that's going to do it for this one guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please hit that like button. Until next time, I'm Mike and this is Novatech. Thanks for watching everybody.